Um, so I'd like I'd like to call to order the Harbor Village Cooperative Board of Directors uh, for Thursday, July 1st. All right, uh, Sharon, why don't you take roll call? All right. So I know Mo is here. You've been talking. John and Pat, I see you. And Nancy, I think, just joined. Yes. Do we have Calvin on the line? Okay, so I'm gonna mark Calvin absent, but we do have a quorum. I actually, I, I just let Calvin in, Sharon. Okay. We have all six board members in attendance. All right, so let's uh, move on to the minutes. So I sent the minutes out about 4.30 to getting them out earlier in the future. Um, if anybody had a chance to look at them, do you have any comments, changes, edits? Uh, they look fine to me. Sharon, I didn't have any edits. Anyone else? How about the rest of the board? I think the edits, the uh, minutes have been accepted then. <clears throat> All right, so minutes are approved as presented. And then the next update on, or the next item on the agenda is the treasurer uh, update. This is actually going to turn into a treasurer's report. Um, my intention is in June, excuse me, in July, um, is to go back <clears throat> instead of weekly meetings to go to a biweekly meeting schedule. So we'll have um, our official CASA Commonwealth and Cooperative Board meeting on uh, Thursday, the, the second Thursday. So the, the second Thursday will be the eighth. Um, and that's, I believe that one may even be led by Gail from CASA. And that one's, we're gonna move through the agenda quickly. The, we'll have our first set, hopefully, our first set of financials. The eighth is early on as far as the second Thursday. So that, that may be postponed a little bit, but we're pushing for the eighth to have a first set of financials for the cooperative. And then on the 22nd, uh, skipping a week, we will have more of a community type meeting. And so that's the intention moving forward the second Thursday and the fourth Thursday, we will have board meetings. One is going to be more formal and the other one will be a little more like the community meetings, still a board format, but the community meetings that we've had. And then um, we can have, we can insert other Thursday meetings as needed, but I'd like to back off um, now that the sale is over and we know what we're working with, at least, at least right now we do, uh, to go to a buy, a, a buy, weekly meeting. Does anyone have a problem with that on the board? I support that. Okay. And we can have special meetings on Mondays as necessary. We can call for a Thursday meeting if we need it. Um, I just think that at this point, the sale is done. We're moving forward with some big stuff right now. I think really what we need to do is settle in and see what the financials are gonna look like and get through to the uh, finalizing everything from a permanent board, permanent bylaws. Um, John, Pat, Nancy, Calvin, do any of you have a problem with that? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm trying to move this. I got a different computer, so I had to get the mouse over there. No, I haven't got a problem with it. No, okay. as a matter of fact, hallelujah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and eventually, eventually we're gonna get down to one monthly meeting. Um, oh, I, know, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> as long as I'm involved, I'm pushing to uh, go in that direction. But I think for now, uh, things will pop up and we can address those as necessary. 
um, but let's shoot for that. So in the month of July, just a quick summary, we're going to do a formal board meeting with CASA and Commonwealth on Thursday the 8th. We'll have a less formal, like the meetings that we've had in the past, board meeting, community meeting on the 22nd of July. So that's, uh, stay tuned for that. Well, that's, that's the intention. So speaking of uh, Treasurer's report, which we will have on, hopefully on the 8th, I'd like to discuss the role of treasurer. Um, you know, we've had we've had a couple of of weeks now go by between uh, Martin's being treasurer and Ron, um, who had to step back. So I've been thinking about this, and Sharon and I had a discussion a couple of weeks ago, and she said that she would be willing to fill the treasurer role on the interim board. Um, and possibly moving forward, it just depends on how things play out, uh, to fill that role in the interim. Um, no, I've, I've worked several contacts. I've had people that were interested, but just because of their travel schedules or their family uh, situations, they just couldn't take it on at this time. So Sharon was willing to step into the treasurer's position. That would leave uh, the secretary position open, which at this point, the bulk of that is just minutes at our Thursday meetings. Um, and so I, as president, would like to propose that we proceed with that. Uh, Sharon, if you're still willing to do that, I think I'd like, I'd prefer that because we've got all the knowledge and the histor the historical view with Martin in the background. Um, and thank you, Martin. Yes. Um, so are you still willing to do that? Yes. Okay, so I guess we would have to take with, a with Martin's help. <laughs> yeah, with Martin's support, we can do that. And then what what that would mean is, um, you know, we can the the minute taking is really simple. I mean, we have everything recorded, so capturing the minutes. And for anyone out there that might be willing to step into that, you can take a look at the minutes on our website. They're they're the highlights, the things that we voted on, or the things that we've decided to postpone, they're really the, the top highlights. And uh, we are gonna get to, uh, to the formal board meeting, things will be more streamlined and the meetings will go quicker. So fewer meetings, quicker meetings, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But I guess we'd need to vote and I can't make a motion as president. So would someone uh, make a motion that we uh, move Sharon officially into the treasurer's role? I'll make that motion move her in officially to the treasurer's role. Thank you for that. <laughs> and do I have a second? Second, John. I'll second that. <laughs> All right, are there any questions or is there any discussion before we go to vote? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you can't scare me. <laughs> All right, so all of those uh, in favor of uh, voting to approve Sharon moving into the treasurer's role, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed aye. board members? All right, so <clears throat> with that, um, the motion carries. Uh, Sharon, thank you very much. And, and for anyone who's wondering, Sharon has been one of those um, number crunchers behind the scenes all along looking very carefully at everything with Martin so it just makes sense and as we go to the permanent board we can look and see you know who what strengths and we what strengths we have in the cooperative and again you'll hear me say I like working on things in teams so it's a it's a it's a it's a title but it's also a really important function so thank you Sharon for doing that sure <clears throat> so I have not been um, on my screenshot or my screen layout is a, is a little wacky tonight. Do we have anyone from CASA with us, Eddie or Gail? Or is CASA with us on the call? Yeah, I'm here. It's just my internet's pretty flickering today. It's been flickering oh. all day, so um, okay. but I'm here. So <clears throat> I know a lot of people are out for the 4th of July holiday. Um, Eddie, do you have any update that we need to know about before we move on in our agenda? Not at this time. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes it easy. Thank you. I hope you, uh, 
I hope you are able to enjoy some time. I it, it seems like Commonwealth and Casa they all have have uh, gotten out and they are on their way to a nice weekend. So I hope you have some weekend time as well. Um, <clears throat> stick around. I don't, I don't know if I will, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next agenda item is... Um... Mo, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Did we want to appoint a secretary? If, if someone wants to step forward, yeah, um, sure. Why don't you give a, an overview of kind of what that entails? I, I, it, it's, it's, I kind of summarized it where it's really the, the, the key points in our meetings, but what else would you say is um a responsibility now that we've we know what the co-op's about so i also serve as backup to you for keeping important documents important signed documents um and have access to the drop box that is provided by casa to retrieve documents that are necessary um i'm also wondering if other members on the board who are not assigned a role, maybe could step into the secretary role. And so really it's just taking copious notes during the meeting and transcribing those into a template. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess we, uh, we can uh, put that out, uh, Nancy or John or Calvin, are any of you interested at this time or willing to to take those the, on those responsibilities? Okay, you're unmuted there. Oh. I think I could nominate Calvin to assume this role. I, I think what I heard him talking about the other day. Uh, I think our last meeting certainly indicated his uh, pre-affection pre with uh, getting things with people and getting them moving with people. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think, given the, what the secretary role could be, is not only the getting these things down, but also adding some a little more humanity into it rather than just straight data. Whether he'd accept or not is another question. <laughs> well, and there is a there is an angle to it in that um, Rose and I'm sure Commonwealth maybe at some point as well. Um, they Rose adds documents, uh, usually financial documents at this point to Dropbox, and then she invites us. I I think Sharon is the primary person who's been getting the email links. And then Sharon goes up and just keeps an eye on it and monitors, you know, what what new stuff has been put in Dropbox. So there is a little bit of a technical component. And uh, yeah, Calvin, are what are you with us? Oh yeah, sorry, I just had my video off because I was making dinner. Um, shoot, I, I I don't know right now to be honest. Like I feel like I haven't even really been able to uphold some of my responsibilities for the bylaws committee the last week. Cause I keep having different emergencies come up and then started having health problems with my heart recently. So I'm just, I, I'm kind of afraid of taking on much more right now since I've really been debating whether or not I should step down from that at the moment. Um, the audio cut out. I could hear you. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you, Calvin.
Okay, I can't hear anybody now. Oh, there we go. Well, no. Sharon, is that you? I just got the sound back. Yeah, I can only hear you. Is anybody else talking? Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I think what has happened is I think I think Mo dropped off somehow. So I think that's why. <laughs> no, she's there. I'm back. Oh, I don't yeah. know what happened. I lost my internet connection. Yeah. Likely oh, story. I, sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> coming back in. So catch me up. What's been going on? Calvin said he would find the secretary position. So now it's open again. Okay. All right. And then Jeff had his hand up. So I think that's the last thing I said before I got kicked out. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mostly, I just wanted to add to the uh, responsibilities of the secretary is as the uh, record keeper of record for the, for the organization. So that means not just monitoring websites or drop boxes or whatever, but actually printing out final copies of records, documents, and filing them so they can be you know, referred to in the future, even if the uh, internet drop box or whatever is uh, deleted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Thank you. Well, and that doesn't, uh, you know, here, here's another thought too. Um, if someone is listening and uh, as far as participating in the, in the Zoom meetings, if you would like to step forward and join us, that's, that is uh, something that, you know, absolutely that position is open to anybody, not just existing board members. Um, and I will also put it out there uh, uh, to the membership in an email because someone might uh, want to step forward. I know we're at 32 participants, but um, you know, if anyone's interested, I'd say shoot us an email or give one of us a call. Uh, Calvin, thank you for for uh, putting the word out as well. I'll get it out on the website and through by email. Uh, Mo, there's also a comment in the chat about having to have. Um, internet access to be able to apply for a spot on the board, even if it's an interim position. And somebody else mentioned that they, they could put, um, I'm scrolling down to it, they could submit a written application to We lost you, Sharon. All of a sudden I've lost Looks like you're back. Okay. <laughs> uh, my the audio is going in and out. That's interesting. So yeah, uh, written applications are fine. Um, they th that can th any any way, whether it's email or in writing at the office. Um, uh, whatever's easiest. Uh, just just something that gives. Uh, that we can distribute to the rest of the board and the members um, and really the rest of the board right now to be able to vote on that and fill that position. So absolutely, you don't have to have internet. It's important on, on some level though, at some point, because there are, there are activities that need to happen where you've got to be able to have some sort of computer access. If you're taking minutes, typically the minutes are distributed after the meeting uh, by email. And so, uh, yeah, so that's my thought on that. But anyone who wants to participate, we just need to, to have a notification and a little write up. Um, you know, maybe we'll have more than one, but yeah, get that to us any way you can. Email is preferable, but we realize that not everybody has email. Um, the secretary position, there is a, some amount of a technicality involved because you're keeping your eye on documents that are posted and and as Jeff said, uh, keeping a record. Um, and then maybe maybe one of our board members will will fill that position, 
And then a member at large position would be open. And that one is a little less technical. Um, we still want people, this is, email is the big method that we communicate with on the board. And so I would say being able to check email and stay current on decisions that need to be made or conversations that need to take place uh, is going to be is going to be important. So that's my two cents on on uh, requirements to serve on the board. Anything else about uh, the secretary position? All right, so let's move on to um, property manager and maintenance. So we have a, uh, we've made a decision, the board has made a decision to um, uh, move ahead with a, a husband and wife candidate who are uh, Diane and Rick uh, Wilkerson. And uh, they are, they were screened and put through several interviews before we were, um, were before they, they were presented to us by Commonwealth. And um, we have decided to move ahead with employment on the, an official uh, community manager, which is the office position and a maintenance supervisor. So the Wilkerson's are from Camas, Washington and they are relocating to Newport. And they have, uh, they have given a two week notice and they will be here the second week in July. I believe that they will begin on Monday, July 12th. So I have a bio, they've sent me their bios and something that I can post. I'll put that on the website for people to see, but um, they have an extensive background in running RV and mobile home parks and uh, Commonwealth was very impressed. They went through interviews with all of the vice presidents at Commonwealth and our rep, Marcus, our, our regional rep. And uh, they were actually in Newport on vacation a uh, week before last and they came and stopped by and um, we met them and it was, it was they're, they're very dynamic. They work together. Uh, they both understand Rent Manager, the software that is in the in the uh, office and they're very capable. And so it's very exciting. And I, I will remind you that uh, hiring a qualified um, property manager through Commonwealth, working with Commonwealth uh, as our, our management company is all a requirement of the lender. And um, I think this is gonna be really great. They're excited to be here. Um, they were highly vetted and they had several other offers from other RV mobile home communities. So this is what they've done. And uh, we just finalized things in the last couple of days and they're making it happen. So um, yeah, that's the update on our, on our property manager and uh, maintenance. Are there uh, any comments from the board? Do you wanna add uh, anything about our, our interviews? Uh, just about everybody was able to meet this couple when they came through um, and they were here twice. Um, Sharon, I know you were out of town and Calvin, I don't think you were here that day. Um, anything to add board members? I was there and I was impressed. I would uh, have to second that. <laughs> Not only were we impressed, uh, they seemed to be, uh, first of all, well acquainted with the things that we were asking them to do, uh, having exposure in all of those areas, and with the skill sets uh, to step on and really start making this thing move, mm -hmm. uh, rather than ha having a training session. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lady who likes a, a particular drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. Diane, that's right. Well, and the, the learning yeah, we, curve. We, we the learning send her to, to no. margaritas. margaritas <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's she's fond of margaritas. Well, and the 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 big bonus for for me, and I think the the co op in general is, they are fully versed in rent manager. Um, they Rick, as far as being the maintenance side of that duo 
is used to working in the office, participating with rent manager. He understands the software and can back, back up Diane. And um, yeah, I think it's a, I think that the learning curve is gonna be, uh, I don't think the learning curve is gonna be steep for them. Um, and I can tell everybody that one of the things that uh, was decided is that they will live in the um, house that's connected to the office. And um, all of the candidates that were highly qualified, none of them were local. Um, and we realized that in order to attract someone who's highly qualified, has a background and the experience to handle a park of this size, um, that housing was gonna be important. And in working the numbers, the rent expectation on renting, on uh, building that out, doing the remodel on the house, separating it from the office and then renting it, well, because this uh, couple is a package deal um, and we didn't have to hire two separate positions that were total, totally separate unrelated, we've uh, saved uh, thousands of dollars. And when we ran the math, actually, this is a, this is a better savings to the co-op, which is one of the sales points that uh, Commonwealth had said. So we feel it was a rare opportunity. And um, yeah, I think the learning curve is really uh, not gonna be a big deal. And they're gonna come right in and hit the ground running. So they, they're gonna be here next weekend and they're gonna be ready to go on Monday. So I will put out bios and some information on them. They sent me a, a photo and they're very excited. They, want, they, they had other offers, but Newport's where they wanted to be. And they love the park. They, they said out of all the properties that they've looked at over the last several months, they just connected with Harbor Village and they, you know, just driving around, they said they liked the vibe. They thought the park was beautiful and they saw a lot of opportunity here. And they're in it for the long haul. They, they, they wanna make this their home a couple of the other candidates we talked to were a little more up and coming. I think they were wanting to get their feet wet. They had some great experience. I mean, these, these candidates that uh, Commonwealth vetted for us were all excellent. Resort backgrounds, apartment complex management uh, backgrounds, um, and, um, and all of them had mobile home and RV experience. So that was really nice to just be presented. Uh, uh, some really high-end candidates. So that happens on uh, Monday, this, Monday the 12th, and we'll keep you posted. I'll send out some more information. I feel they'll do a real good job. Yeah, Nancy, I agree. I agree. All right, so let's go right into the uh, plumbing repair. Um, Pat, what, what, do you have an update for us on uh, Albert since you've, I think you were the last, the last to interact with him. Yeah, so he will be here tomorrow to sign papers. Um, he's ready, he knows Harbor Village has taken over the pay scale for him to continue the work on. So he's coming up tomorrow to discuss that and then talk to you and I. Did he come up with a fixed price, Pat? He did. Uh, I'm sorry, that's another thing. But he raised it by twenty thousand dollars and said he would put an end cap on it of one hundred eighty thousand dollars. And Nancy, I I know that we were looking for bids. Uh, one of the issues that we're running into um, for comparison bids is availability. Yes. Um, so, uh, I, Nancy, I don't know if you spoke with Pat earlier, but why don't you give an update on all of the uh, legwork that you've done in the last 24 hours on other, alt other plumbers? I called seven different ones today, and they are either all booked or they don't have the equipment to do it, and hardly any of them does the eight inch anyway. And it's just really hard to find somebody that, you know, has the time or can do it. Mm -hmm. I went to Depot Bay, Celeste, Lincoln City, um, Newport, and it's just hard to find anybody at all. One said they'd give me a quote, but they've never called back. That's so. what I found out too with a couple of the plumbing outfits here. 
all the same answer. They're three to four weeks out or eight to 10 weeks out, or they don't have the equipment to do it. Right. I had done that all prior to that, Nancy. It's very hard. <laughs> Well, and I had shared with the board that uh, Newport Plumbing and Rao, I think uh, Newport Plumbing was eight to eight to 12 weeks out and Rao didn't have um, some of the equipment, which I'm sure could be contracted out, but they were also four weeks out. My concern is that we've got seven spaces right now that are empty, that we've had to keep empty, spaces 119 up past 131. And um, we have canceled several reservations in July, hoping that we would be able to complete this plumbing repair in July. Um, the back and forth with the property seller, um, who uh, that there's that's that's gonna. Th it sounds like he's taken this repair as far as he's gonna go, and if we're gonna pursue that, that's on the co-op and the attorney to pursue that with the seller's attorney. Um, my concern is that this, if we don't um, get going on this, and, and I, again, I don't know anything about reasonable costs when it comes to a plumbing project of this magnitude. And I know Jeff and Martin had talked about some alternatives potentially um, for that repair in the way that it would be fixed. My huge concern right now is that uh, if, if we don't move on this, um, that we're, we're going to be, it, it could be September. And I'm really concerned about lost revenue uh, for these uh, vacation spaces. We're booked. So given the, the, the reservations on file now, we're booked into September. Um, we've already lost a huge chunk of June um, for these uh, vacation spaces that are, that are paying $700 a month to be here. So I'm not sure what the answer is. I, we definitely want to talk to Albert. The other thing too, is that he's already prepped a lot of this work. Um, not a lot, but he's prepped some work already on the seller's dime because the seller initially, he thought he was going to be doing the entire repair from 119 all the way up to past 131 to the transition point. So, I'm not real sure how much more we can delay, but on the other hand, I just, even getting people out here to do bids was not even possible. Um, I know Pat, the two companies and, and um, Nancy did call those companies again today, just to see what the type of answer she would also get. She got the same answer that they're far out and, or they don't have the, the equipment to be able to do that. So I would just like a board consensus on, on, uh, how to move forward on this. Um, you know, the seller's thought was we gave you guys a concession for this type of infrastructure. So you got a concession on the price you need to move forward. I just don't know if I, you know, based on the pricing, what that's, what that looks like. And, and I will remind everyone that Albert is from the Eugene area. He's, he's in the outskirts of Eugene. So it seems to me like all the local plumbers are not available it's so far out, we would have to hire out to a plumber in the valley anyway. So there would be the expenses associated with that. Um, let's open this up for board discussion. Well, I feel we already know what they're doing and they did a good job so far and I think we should stick with them. I don't object to sticking with them, but I do have a question about the technique that they're using because Martin had a suggestion about, and I don't recall what it's called, Martin, about, um, it sounds like it's a technique that they use in cardiology where they put down a, a, a stent or something and they, a balloon and they blow it up. And I don't wanna, I'm not, I'm not in any position to tell Albert how to do his job, but I'm wondering if, if he's aware of that technique and would be able to charge us less than half of what he's quoted if he uses that different technique. Do we know what that cost is on that technique? Well, well so, so Pat, the only thing I know is, is as I mentioned in, the, you know, in that email to the board is, uh, you know, what, what, one of my clients um, 
she she was caught in that similar situation, you know, uh, where uh, the city was requiring her to redo her uh, sewer line going out to the main line, and it would have cost her fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars, you know, to dig the trench and all that other stuff. And so, so this uh, the, this company is it, actually called Flow Technologies. Uh, you know, they came in, and and actually, ironically, Sharon is actually sort of somewhat dis correct. Is is you know they. They just simply push this, uh, it's, it's some type of uh, polyester, I, I'm not exactly sure what, so some type of resin material, and then and they, 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 they push it down the pipe, and then they blow it up, and they, you know, heat it up, and it hardens, and so, so in this particular case, this contractor did the work for like, uh, I think it was like seven or eight thousand dollars, though, uh, and plus, plus the road didn't have to get dug up, and all that other stuff, though, so, so I, you know, I mean, it, oh, you know, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's another technology. Um, and uh, uh, so it, it was certainly successful in the case of my client, you know, the, you know, the, the contractor scoped the line and the city was happy with it. And so, so anyways, that, that, that's why I just simply threw that out just, just simply because, you know, the uh, price quote from Albert is, so high so uh, i agree so uh do we have information on a company that could come out here and give us a bid on doing that just that well i i i actually i just got that information today um because i couldn't recall what the company's name was um so 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 it's it's as i said the company's name is flow technologies I, and there, there's actually a couple of other companies that do that uh i i it's it's a special technique, and and I'm sure Albert doesn't do that. You know, you because you, you have to have an entirely different type of equipment for that, though. Um, so, um, you know, I I could possibly make some phone calls. As as I mentioned earlier, you know, I have my grandkids hanging around my uh, ankles right now, though. But I I could try to uh, call Flow Technologies tomorrow. You know, uh, try to get a hold of that company or one of the other companies. You know, just just. Well, we're also burning daylight. What? We are burning daylight. Yeah, yeah. We need to get moving with this. Yeah. We're losing money every damn day that we delay. Yeah. Well, and if it's if it's a significant savings, that might be worth it. I guess. Um, Martin, do you have enough information on the current state of the repair to be able to uh, give specifics if you if you contact Flow Technologies, if you make contact? Well, I, I just simply have what uh, Albert had written up in that uh, scope, so I, I could just simply forward that to the company. I, I think it's like 200 feet, so something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, so Pat, if Martin makes a couple of phone calls tomorrow, does Albert need to be on site? I don't want him to waste a trip here. <laughs> He's gonna get pissed. Um, you know, if, if and, and uh, you know what? I'm all for saving money. If it's gonna save us thousands of dollars, I'm all for it. But yeah. I mean, we've been putting Albert off and off and off because of our problems. Now, I mean, and this problem needs to be taken care of because it's costing us money. Mm. But, but at the same time, sure. Okay, let's delay it another day. Um, he wasn't planning on being back here till Monday anyway. Okay. So, I, yeah, we could call Albert and say, hey, let's hold off a day. Mm -hmm. I have, I don't got no problem with that, especially if it's going to save us, you know, fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and, and Martin, I don't know if you saw in the chat or not, but uh, Kat and or Brian posted a, a URL to a company called accurateleak.com. So here's, um, here's what I'm suggesting. Um, I'd, I'd like to postpone Albert. I mean, Pat, we're going into the July 4th weekend, and I think we should postpone him till early next week. That'll give us some time to figure this out. He does know that, you know, that he's in a, he's kind of in a bind because I don't think he's, I think he's put, got some work into this that he's probably not going to be able to recoup because Clay shut him down as far as the seller goes. Um, but why don't we postpone him so he doesn't waste a trip here? 
Um, Martin, if, if you need some backup or some help, reach out. I, I think some initial phone calls would be helpful. Let's see if this project is even appropriate for it. If, if the technique is even, if we're even eligible for that. And um, if they can even get out here. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll know more with, of what we're dealing with. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's okay. Martin, do you think you can make those calls tomorrow? Yeah, I, I'll go ahead and make those calls. And, you know, it may just turn out to be a dead end. Well, you know, we are going into the holiday weekend. It doesn't make sense even if Albert was to start to come and set everything up on a Friday and then shut it all down for the weekend. So, yeah, Pat, you know, he wasn't going to come over here except for signing the papers. And he originally, because he wanted to get everything ready to rock and roll for Monday. Originally, he wasn't going to come over here till Monday. Okay. Uh, to the other technology and that sort of thing, it's a uh, huge difference in, in looking at fragmented uh, main feeds of size and significance mm -hmm. uh, versus a fur that comes up to somebody's house out of the main. Mm -hmm. And my concern would be, what is your record? What kind of stuff have you done? And I would like to see what your results look like. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. So let's cancel. Uh, will you cancel Albert this evening just so he, he knows what he's dealing with? Um, it can't come as a surprise. I mean, he realizes that he was in the middle during this whole thing. And it's not our fault that the, uh, that the repair was shut down prematurely. So we're, de we're dealing with it. Um, and he's been very understandable and reasonable. Um, Martin, if you need help uh, making calls or you need backup tomorrow, uh, let us know. Yeah, so why don't I, you know, after this meeting ends, uh, you know, I'll, I'll track down that accuratelink.com and a couple of others and, uh, and then, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll send out that list to the board later this evening and, um, you know, maybe people can make some phone calls. I can make some phone calls. Yeah, I, um, I am, I've got an hour tomorrow from 12 to one when the office is closed because rent, it, because it's rent time, it's just a steady stream of, of, uh, of people paying their rent. And because it's 4th of July weekend, the phone is ringing off the hook. So I can help from 12 to one. Um, Nancy, are you around just in case tomorrow? Yes, I think so, Mel. Okay. All right, so we have a plan. Uh, Wilbur, you had your hand up. Yeah, I remember months ago when we were talking power and water, it was either John or Pat. I'm pretty sure it was Pat was saying how we didn't have to tear up roads. There was modern technology to do this stuff. And here we are, we're talking about tearing up roads. No, we're not tearing up any roads. Well, you follow the marks. I'm pretty sure you're going to be tearing up asphalt. Don't judge a book by its cover, Wilbur. We are not tearing up any roads. Yeah, that's the good news. So the Albert came up with the um, idea of running the new trench at the back of the spots. Um, and those white markings on the pavement actually on the asphalt are actually the concrete line that the failing green eight inch pipe uh, would hook into. So those, those white pavement marks are just documenting what's concrete underneath. So the plan is to run a trench along the back end of all of those spaces and not have to tear up the concrete. Um, it, was a, it was a cost saving measure that he thought would be, would be a, a, a nice idea because it's, it's a straight shot pretty much up through the back of all of those spaces. So that's the good news. But yeah, that's if we can uh, if we can save money and not have to tear up that tear up all that asphalt, that's that's preferable. But that was Albert's plan uh, was to run that at the back. So the white markings are the concrete, the existing concrete pipe. All right, so I think we have a plan on that. Um, Thank you, everybody. Let's uh, let's uh, go right into the bylaws. Um, Jeff, I, I'm going to defer to you only because Calvin said that he's uh, had a week of uh, 
of uh, things that have popped up. So why don't you take the lead on this if, that, if that's all right. And Calvin, feel free to jump in. Okay, thank you, Morella. Um, so the uh, bylaws committee um, in part met uh, both Monday and, or I'm sorry, Tuesday and today. Uh, Calvin, Linda and Teresa were all unavailable as well as Gail. So it was kind of uh, uh, Michael, Nicole and I and Eddie sort of trying to make our way through the end of, of the documents. Uh, there are three documents that we're still working on. And uh, the three of us think we've got those three pretty well wrapped up. But again, Linda and Teresa haven't had a chance to, to take a look at those. We also spent some time, uh, Nicole put together some questions for a survey and uh, we you know, hacked, the, hacked those apart and put them back together again. And again, we got them into what we felt were a pretty good um, condition ready for the board to consider. Uh, Linda uh, expressed concern that she hadn't had a chance to review them and was concerned about the language and wanted to make sure that things were phrased correctly and such. Um, and uh, so with uh, Linda and Teresa and Calvin not not weighing in on those, I would like to uh, uh, represent that the consensus is we hold off on those, uh, having those questions reviewed by the board at this time until Linda and Teresa and hopefully Calvin can uh, take a look at them and, and come back with their comments. Okay, and I'm, I apologize for not being able to look at the survey questions. I'm, <laughs> I've been having all sorts of computer issues in the last week, but I think I figured it out. It was my uh, Gmail not allowing me in. And it's a, I don't use my Gmail frequently, um, but I think I've solved it. So I'll still go in and I'll still proof it. But if I've got a little more time uh, in the process, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's no problem. I also uh, originally set up your access through your uh, Go communications email. Um, I went ahead and set up an alternate one through your Gmail account. So you should be able to get in either way. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for your patience. You guys have put so much work into this. When you put a call out for something, I we all try to respond quickly, but um, what is, what is, where is it in process with rock? What was the, what was the update on that? Okay. So um, I, I apologize. I inadvertently included uh, Brian Dasso in the email saying the bylaws were ready for board review. He responded with a thank you. He would uh, review the documents. And I apologize. I, uh, my normal protocol would be to go to the board and then the board talks to the lawyer. So I apologize for that uh, shortcut. But he's going to review the uh, document for legal issues and make any changes necessary there. Yeah, and, and then also um, go back and look at best practices and make comments about where he feels that we are not following uh, best practices from his experience. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the, going to rock, to, to answer your question, going to rock requires uh, Gail or Eddie or somebody to uh, forward, forward them on to Rock. My understanding of the process was that the board of directors would review and make any comments before sending it out to Rock. Yeah. Yes, once they're done, <clears throat> me or Gail, um, Gail or I will um, send them off to Rock. And then from there, they go to the attorney. So I think we're getting close then. Uh, it sounds like you guys have made a lot of progress and we're just, yeah, we're just a, like a pass away from being able to review it and, uh, and uh, look at it as a board. Uh, for the bylaws, I believe we're ready for the board to do an official review. Okay. Hmm. 
does the board have any questions or comments? And so this is about the bylaws, not necessarily the rules and or the lease agreements, correct? That's correct. The, uh, okay. the bylaws are ready. I believe the lease is ready. We, again, uh, for clarification, we marked up and got into, I believe, close to a final form, the RV lease uh, document. The mobile home lease document will be identical except for the services the board provides, or I'm sorry, the co-op provides, the electricity, cable TV and such that the mobile home side does not enjoy. Those are documented differently in the lease. But in order to uh, avoid confusion about making change A on the RV side, change B on the mobile home side, then trying to resolve all that at the end, we elected to just go ahead and beat the heck out of the RV lease. And when the lawyer rock and everybody saw, says that's it, we will then uh, make a copy of that, add the specialties from the mobile home side, again, electricity, cable TV, et cetera. And so uh, when you're reviewing it, please review the RV lease only. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. So then um, it's, it, we'll just wait to, to hear from you on uh, when it's ready. Um, unless unless one of the links that you've sent out previously you'd like us to look at or shall we just wait for a formal invitation uh nicole michael is, do you have any issues with uh having the board review the lease or the uh um well the community rules um are mostly finished there's a bit of a hiccup there because huh? no are you hey lisa and bob good I boy <laughs> okay. Hey, Lisa, we Thank can you. hear you. Please mute. Okay. There you um, go. So as, um, the community rules is a bit of a hiccup because there was a big policy thing, uh, which the um, Casa uh, Gail said, what's that doing in there? You know, that shouldn't be in there. And we're like, it's part of the template. So uh, we never got we never got a uh, follow-up document saying here's how the um, the what the policy is for having the property manager uh, do the enforcement of uh, friendly notices final warning that kind of thing um, so the community rules as such are ready to go but there's a whole policy and enforcement piece that's still missing okay. but uh, Again, uh, Nicole, Michael, Linda, Teresa, do you have any issues with having the board starting to review all these things? No, I think it's fine. It's good, go ahead. I think everything's fine, but the rules. Okay. <laughs> Hearing no objections, uh, the- there, um... There, there are the issues of uh, that are covered in Nicole's survey. Uh, just these basic things of uh, dogs or no dogs. Um, fifty-five were, and uh, over. <laughs> fifty-five, yeah, exactly. Fifty-five and over. Short term versus no short term. There's a lot of things yeah, that are well, op that's, open. That, that's a that's a big one. We know how Eddie feels about that, and that's that's a real big one. But it's not me that feels about it; it's the lender. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. You know, I have so, no say over it. <laughs> right. So, I'm sorry. So, so clearly, the community rules are not in a final format. Uh, we we would like to do a survey to find out what the community would prefer, and um, have the board take that into consideration. But, um, and again, this is a survey, not a vote. But, um, you know, in the meantime, the board could certainly be looking at the rest of the rules, at the bylaws, at the lease, and things like that. So is there I, some way, Jeff, is there some way we can have the attorney look, I mean, 
Eddie and Gail have put forth an opinion, not, not a, a rule based on rock or based on the attorney or anything, that we all have to be equal and the same in the rule category. But what does the attorney say before we take a survey of the community? Because we don't even know what the answer is. Okay, well, again, my protocol is that I do not have the authority to ask or uh, talk to the attorney directly. That's something that should go through the board um, mm -hmm. president or through the board in general. Uh, Nicole has her hand up. Nicole? I just wanted I just wanted to add that if the board would like to review the portions of the rules that we have gone over, there are some obvious items of contention that need to be settled by survey to the to the members or for more detailed information from the lender to make sure we know what we can legally do and not do. But I would say that you know 90% of it is completed and including quite a lot of language that you know, it's not not going to be a, not going to be a contest. So the board can review the preliminary draft of the rules if they would like to have an idea of what's actually in there. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, so because there have been a lot of emails going back and forth on the bylaws, um, what I would love is if you would summarize, if someone on the committee would summarize to the board the current uh, link to the current documents. I, I know that you guys have drafts and past and future and present. So uh, if you don't mind, I think that would be really helpful. That would be a, a, the path of least resistance for the board to take an initial look at it. That would be great. I'd, I'd appreciate an email. Okay, I'd be happy to do that for you. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? You guys have put a lot of work into these. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. I'm glad to uh, be able to help out this way. Yes, thank you very much. Um, all right, so the next item on the agenda is the mailboxes. Uh, for the RV side, um, I sent out an email uh, this afternoon to the board summarizing the, uh, the pricing on the mailboxes. And so just a, just a quick summary, the, um, the mailboxes themselves are through a company called Salisbury Industries. It's the same company that the existing mobile home side mailboxes were purchased from. And we've received a bid from Combat Construction, which is the contractor that is uh, approved by the post, the post office here locally. And they, that's the, the uh, contractor who installed and built that um, mail shelter uh, also on the mobile home side. So what I've done is I've taken the pricing and I just summarized it in an email. And it's, it's, it's really simple. It's two components. Um, we have the price of the mailboxes themselves, and that's eight recessed banks of mailboxes, which is a total of 160 mailboxes. And um, that, that, uh, that, the price for that is uh, 16527 And so that price is pretty, pretty, uh, it stays the same regardless of how many mailboxes we were going to try to place around the park, where they were, the location, et cetera. That 16,527 is a, is, a, is a set number because that is the eight banks of boxes. It's 160 total. And then that also includes the 24 package lockers uh, that, would, uh, that would be underneath that are keyed. So um, that is the, that's part of the component, 16527 And then the combat uh, construction bid uh, came in at uh, just, just a few dollars shy of 28000 
And I outlined that in the email. And there were two options, basically. Uh, one option is about uh, uh, four to $5,000 more. And that would allow for a second bank of boxes. So the, the, question, the question that we have is, uh, do we have one large bank of, uh, of mailboxes up uh, just north of 131 uh, below Ranger Ricks? Or do we have two banks of boxes and we split them up with, with the other half being down near the office? And uh, one, of the, one of, the, uh, of the options as far as the, the post office weighing in, they would like to see one large bank of boxes and uh, when we look at the traffic that's outside the office and, and coming in off of Bay Boulevard, that would, uh, it would just add more congestion. So I, I guess that's the summary. Um, Debbie is saying in the comments that the bid was for 11 boxes, uh, 11, 11 sets of boxes where we only need 10. Um, so at any rate, I wanted to throw out the discussion for the board members, see if anyone has any questions. This has been pretty well thought out and we are under some limitations by the postmaster. Uh, we were hoping initially to have banks, several banks throughout the park and the postmaster is, has put the kibosh on that. And there's some new guidelines and things that are, that are now in place uh, since the uh, mailboxes were built on the mobile home side. Um, questions or comments on the bid that I uh, sent out? Mo? Oh, yes. Oh, go ahead, Pat. Um, what has there been an option as far as you could put the whole bank up there by the office itself? Um, what that would require the, the space that that would, we, would require would mean that we would have to. The, the when you first pull in off of Bay Boulevard, the area on the left, which is that grassy area on the uh, Bay Boulevard side of the manager's house and office, it would have to go there. It's large enough, the structure is large enough that um, we'd have to build it there, that we would lose the overflow parking and the post office. They came and walked the property with Debbie and Nancy and uh, they that they they were not they did not want to approve that let's put it that way okay all right they, they said it was too congested and just with all the traffic that's coming in and out sure. so i i they would really like to see all the mailboxes closer towards the middle of the property and that would be in the area that's uh, below ranger ricks where that big culvert crosses underneath the the road so there would be in the overflow parking that's overflow parking right now. Is that correct? Yeah, it would be in that oh, area. Um, and it's, it's people have to be able to pull off the street far enough off the street to, uh, to, to make it feasible. And that's why there were additional boxes up higher up in the, in the, uh, in the park was not an option. There just wasn't enough safe space for multiple cars to pull in and out. So they're thinking that they can build all those boxes if that's the option is put them all up there by 131 and still have enough room to be able to pull off for a card to pull up to the mailboxes more than yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the, boxes, the boxes on the mobile home side are right on the road. There is no pull off right. parking, but there's, there's like a fraction, uh, there's a third of we have a third on the mobile home side that would be you know that that's being proposed for the rv side so, so uh, you know if we're if it's something that's uh, not ready to be voted on we i at least wanted the discussion out there and uh to to the, the postmaster said there just are not a lot of viable places um higher up past past the 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 crossover the the mobile home and rv crossover Okay, so what, what I'm trying to get at too is, I mean, we got three times the amount of residents over here on this side than the, versus the other side, to where if you only put it in one spot, you're gonna have a bigger congestion in one area than you would if you split it into two. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's right 
right at the end of my space. And it's the crossover from the uh, RV to the mobile home side, you know, right by the dumpsters. And I would, if, if that's what you're talking about. The, the space that the space that we're talking about is just past 131. Um, so it's below Ranger Rick's. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, it's, be I, yeah, I it's below you. his property. And that's where there's an area that's way off the street that's off to the side. Um, it's that's kind the of spare, spare parking right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Sorry about that. Yep. Wilbur? I heard that, Pat, John, whoever you were, kiss my ass. Get oh. rid of the overflow parking is a bad idea. Yeah, I well, agree. all right, so I, I'd like this to be a civil meeting, please. So would I. I heard their comment. You can start with your board. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm just saying all the way around. So thank you. That's fine. Um, I understand. Um, I understand that overflow parking is important. I don't, I'm not quite sure of how much space would need to, would be lost if it's the entire area. That's a possibility. Well, um, 160 boxes. Yeah. It's going to eat the whole area up. Wouldn't you think? Well, I look at, I look at the, the kiosk that's on the mobile home side and it would be, it would be basically uh, about three times that size. So when I'm standing in that kiosk, um, I, I know that they, they, they walked it and they measured it. Um, and when I'm standing in that, when I'm looking at that kiosk, I can imagine three times the size, but of course you've got to have easement around it and you've got to have, it, it, it most likely would eat up that entire area. So can I, know, whatever, Mo? I voiced my opinion, I'm done. You guys are going to do whatever you want to do anyways. Bye bye. Uh, uh, Mo, yeah. This is Debbie. Can I say something? Yeah, you're you're involved in this project. You're the one who helped uh, coordinate it with uh, with co with the coastal coastal. So go ahead. Um, I I just want to say that the entire RV side has always gone to one place to get the mail, and that was the office. So I'm not sure what the issue is about going to one place to get your mail at post office spots where you can go 24 seven to go get your own mail. Um, to me, making it aesthetically pleasing and making it safe so that there's not a lot of traffic congestion, we may have to give up um, some overflow parking but from what I understand, that overflow parking that was by Ranger Ricks um, was filled with a car that sat there for five years. So um, we want to make it convenient so people can walk to it. And like I said, for how many years have, have the entire RV side, they've gone to one location to get their mail. Uh, the postmaster has really strict guidelines as to what he is allowed to do. Um, and, and Coastal Combat um, has had some great suggestions. And, uh, you know, um, like I said, we've always gone, the RV side has always gone to the office to get their mail. You guys on the RV side are gonna be able to get your mail 24 seven and be able to pull out of the way. Yep. I wanna say something. One of the other things that we need to understand is the impact of the 24 hour mail coming in on the people living in 131. Because this is right up against it. One, they have uh, several cars that, I mean, you know, the usual number of vehicles in front of this, in front of the rig, uh, which kind of get to the point of the overflow. And then we're going to have that uh, where we, people are coming 24 hours a day and looking at where they live. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Sharon, you've had your hand up. 
Yes, and I sent this in an email to the board when you shared the quotes. Um, so my daughter has lived in a couple of new and even older subdivisions that uh, shared community mailboxes. And, you know, the people in the little neighborhood have to walk to the, to the mail kiosk, if you will. And their mail kiosks are just the metal boxes. They don't have a cover on them. They don't have the, the concrete stones around them. They don't look as nice as the mail kiosk on the mobile home side. And I appreciate all the work that Debbie has done in researching the costs um, of the vendor of the contractor who did the mobile home construction. But I'm really wondering if we really need to pay $28,000 for a, a structure for those mailboxes when it's common in hundreds of neighborhoods all over the state to just have the metal boxes on metal poles mm -hmm. people get their mail out of them. I don't think that we need, we need a, a luxury mail kiosk and I'm wondering if it would be prudent to get a quote to just have the metal boxes. Is that possible, Debbie? You know, I think anything's possible. My, my guess, I was just typing in the um, chat space. I think that Clay is a pretty smart man. And I think for some reason he decided to build an enclosure. We live at the beach. So I think um, for safety reasons and for lighting so people could walk um, and, and for some sort of, of shelter because we do live at the beach. That's why he built what he did. Um, I think we could certainly look into just putting a mailbox up. Um, I personally think for safety issues with lighting, people go to get their mail in the middle of the night, having, having that be kind of a safe place to go um, that's my personal opinion. And, and again, I think that Clay loves to save money. He doesn't spend it, um, on things without putting a lot of thought into it. And for some reason, he felt it necessary to build that enclosure the way that he did. So I don't know, I'm not familiar with the comment that you're making about the lights. Um, and so I don't know if there's like canned lights in that enclosure because I never get the mail at nighttime, but I'm wondering if we could just put in a light post next to the metal mailboxes if that is an issue. And I'm not, I'm not really discussing the placement of the boxes. I'm just talking about the type of mail kiosk. I think it's not just an issue of lighting. It's an issue of it being sort of... Um, not uh, what, how do I want to say sheltered because of the, the weather that we have and the inclement weather and the rain and the drizzle and whatever. I think that has a lot to do with it. Again, I think clay clay. I don't agree with a lot of things that clay does, but he doesn't, he's, he thought the mailboxes out. And I think he came up with that solution with, with the uh, combat construction for a reason. So if we, um, if Debbie, if you were able to get a quote for those, just the metal boxes, and we find out it's like $5,000 versus $28,000, I'm, I'm afraid I'd have to go with $5,000 because we have so many issues that we need to deal with that are going to cost some money. I don't think that we should invest it all in these mail kiosks. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the project was put together to come up with the exact same thing that the mobile home park side did. Yes, I understand um, that. We got the quote for just the mailboxes only. So I'm sure that we can go. I, I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't have it in front of me, Mo. Were they $2,000? No, they were $1,400 a bank. And we need 10 of those. Um so I'm not exactly sure what what and how they would mount those, but I'm sure they could come up with something that was not um, as fancy as the mobile home park side. Of course. 
Yeah, I, I'd like to see that as well. For what I was thinking, because we're at the, I know that the post office has all sorts of guidelines when it comes to facing the ocean and 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 just being on the bay and being on the you know being in Newport so I I'd like to go back and see I, I I don't know if we even are eligible for those mailboxes on posts and you know the one that I'm thinking about Sharon is the post is I don't know three and a half four feet tall and then it's got the boxes they're way up off the ground they're they're the only thing that's that's on that's coming up out of the ground is the post itself. So unless it, I thought maybe it was a weather related issue um, and that Give for, me a our break. Location, for our location, we had to go that route. But if we can, yeah, the, I mean, the, the bulk, more than half of the, the cost is in the construction of the shelter. Yeah. yeah. So if we can skip that completely, I'd like to do that. And I can, I can, well, I don't know if we can get information from combat construction uh, beans that clay made the decision to make a shelter like he did. I'm guessing that maybe there were some requirements because we do live at the beach that he did that because he mm -hmm. didn't spend money to do something that was not necessary. So I'm, and, and I can find out um, from maybe the postmaster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's Thank do you. that. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, I would. I'd love it if you could go back. I know that that you've uh, you've developed a, a a rapport with the postmaster. So let's do that. In my when that when the mailboxes were built on the mobile home side, I thought that was a requirement. I agree. Uh, yeah, me too. Was a requirement. So I I think if we could shave that down, let's do it. So let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the drawing board on that one. If it's not, I, I thought it was. I thought it was required some sort of a shelter was required because of of where we're located um, i'll give the i'll give the postmaster a call tomorrow and see if i can find out and i'll call co combat construction and see what i can come up with okay that would be great yeah the the price on that is so high it's like oh god and i understand the need for it but if uh if we don't have to go that route let's not um so we'll we'll uh We'll come back to the table on this um, and uh, mature it further, but yeah, that would be great. I would appreciate it. Other comments about the mailboxes from the board? Oh, you bet. You bet, I got many. I'm calling on comments from the board right now. We'll have uh, some community time here. We're, we're working our way through the, through the agenda. Um, so I'd like to move on to new business then, and uh, it, this won't take long on the agenda, but um, what I'm going to do, I think we're ready now to put out an official call for nominations for the board, and uh, I, it sounds like we're about a month away from being able to take the bylaws, the lease, and the rules out to the community, and so in that in the weeks coming, I would like to put nominations to get a call for nominations. I'll create a, the, a similar process to the way that we put our interim board together where anyone who wants to run for a seat on the board, there'll be a submission process and, and uh, I'll put that up on the website and I'll get it out by email as well. I think we're ready. Um, Jeff, would you confirm, would you say that we're still, you think that we're about uh, possibly about four weeks away? I know that was the kind of the timeline in our last meeting. Um, yeah, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm really unclear on that because uh, part of it depends on how quickly DASO can get things turned around. Also the uh, Casa Rock, um, loop is, which actually should be done before DASO takes a look at it, but uh, not necessarily. Um, that piece was in question. The original timeline Gail was proposing was to have us finish the bylaws and everything by the end of June, I'm sorry, the end of July, um, through the board approval process, uh, CASA, Rock, and 
Dasso look at it in August, and then we present it to the uh, membership in September. So assuming that everything's pretty much ready to go now, uh, then we're probably looking again, assuming that nobody's gone off on vacation early August, early to mid August for uh, membership review. Okay. All right. So we've got some time, but I think um, last year, um, what we had done was uh, uh, not last year, or earlier in the year when we were putting together the interim board, we um, allowed those candidate statements to be, we allowed the candidate statements to be uh, public and people were able to look look them over. And so I think I'm still gonna put the call out. We, it may be a little early, but I'd like to, people to start thinking about it. And I'll also post the, the position descriptions and uh, Eddie at CASA, if you have any other additional documents about the permanent board, now would be the time because we can start getting that out to people. I've had a couple of people that approach me about uh, running for the board. So okay, um, I will. Um, I'm waiting till Gail gets back. Um, she had to go on uh, a family emergency, so she's not in this week. But I'll get with her and we'll get them sent to you hopefully by Tuesday, if there okay. is. Okay. Yeah, great. I mean, I realize everyone's kind of in. Uh, 4th of July mode, but I just like to kind of get this going and start talking about it in the next week or two. I understand. And, and I know how hard the, the, the board works and the, the committees work, you know, it takes a lot of effort. So I really appreciate everybody's effort and um, trying to just get the, this uh, process going and um, completed. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, board? thoughts um, from the board on the nominations process. All right, so let's move on to, uh, we have a couple more items on the agenda. Uh, a safety committee, um, I've heard from a lot of different residents on different things regarding safety and security in the park. Uh, within the last couple of weeks, you may have heard me use the word security, which uh, kind of has a connotation that we're going to be uh, driving around in a golf cart uh, with flashlights at night checking on things. That's not was not the intention. Um, you you may have remembered uh, me. We've been talking a lot about the the uh, Thompson's sanitation and the issues with uh, our garbage uh, our trash bins. And I've heard from a lot of people that a lot of the problems that are happening are people coming into the park to dump their garbage in all of the bins. And that's costing us a lot of money. So this was part of the conversation that started the idea about a safety committee. Um, and this is everything from signage in the park to um, to the, the, the problem of people coming in off the street and dumping their garbage in our bins. I think that's more of an issue on the, the lower part of the park. Um, so what, what we'd like to do is spin up a safety committee that can discuss these issues and talk about how best, do some planning on how best to uh, keep, keep things going from a, from a safety and security standpoint. Um, so I'm, I'm putting a call out for the committee. Uh, we've got had a couple of residents step forward already. And uh, if you would like to participate, um, I don't think we've got anyone who's willing to chair that committee yet, but it's something that we need to start talking about. And I know signage is a big deal uh, on the RV side. We have RVs that, that end up going up these, these dead end areas and uh, they have to turn around, they have to back out. It's, it's uh, not, it, it, it's not, the signage is not real consistent. Um, part of that safety committee is also the restrooms, the, the door locks, the, the keys that have been handed out, all of that. So I think we're ready to spin up that committee. Uh, is there anyone on the board who would be willing to kind of be a, a foundational member for that committee and, and help that get off the ground? Are there any 
potential committee members who would like to step forward to get that committee going. All right, well, if there's uh, no other uh, discussion on that, we'll move forward, but it is something that I'm gonna start to publish and I'm gonna start to announce. Um, and the couple of members that have come to speak to me about this committee, they may or may not be on the call, but we'll start to put that together. Because I think as a park, we need to look at uh, consistency and how we're gonna deal with some of these issues. And Nicole, I see your comment about sign allowances, which we may be able to apply for. And uh, Paul, uh, Paul at number 12, yep, yeah, he's one of the ones that uh, came to talk to me. So thank you for putting your comments in the chat and uh, I will be in touch and we'll spin that up and get that going. So anyone who wants to participate, you can reach out to me uh, or, or send an email to the Harbor Village community at Gmail and we'll just, uh, we'll just see what we can do on that committee. Okay, yard sale, Nancy, do you have an update or are you prepared to give a, just an overview on where that committee is? I think Hazel's more <clears throat> apt to give you a good yeah. check on that. So. Um, Hazel, are you with us on the call? Yes, I am. We pretty well got, uh, or we would like most, a lot of the names are already documented and I have help from the other side. We would like to have uh, by the 15th to know for sure how many would, would like to join. Other than that, I think we have the signing and everything pretty well under control. Okay, so by the 15th, then you would like to have a list of all residents who wanna participate. Yes. Yes, we would. Okay. And then um, I don't know how formalized we made this, but with the plumbing, with the plumbing repair this year, the intention is to have the yard sale on the mobile home side. We want to try to reduce the traffic into the into the park. And the idea was, uh, is this still the idea where um, anyone who wants to participate uh, from the RV side would partner up with someone on on the mobile home side and they would be able to use the space and the driveway and uh, team up. Is that still the idea? Yes, it is. That was what I put out, uh, the information I put out and we will put out another flyer stating that again. Okay. And I think it's on, I think the event itself has been put out on Facebook. So it is being promoted to the community and um, what, what do you need from the board or what, what do you need in the way of assistance from other, um, other residents? Is there something that we can do to help you right now? Well, I don't think so. I think they were pretty well, you know, after the fourth one, we, when people settled down a little bit, then we pretty well had the signing data and that figured out, Stella and that and our uh, advertisement and that that's pretty well been signed out and I've been working with Mike on the other side and 116 and he's going to help out on that side and okay. spread the word so I don't know there isn't too much else we can could cover mm -hmm. okay so I think it's just getting the word out and anyone who wants to participate can participate um Hazel's, I've seen you've got flyers. If anyone's interested, the, there are flyers on the counter in the front office. I've seen flyers in the laundry room and I will, um, I've got it on the website. So the word is out. I think, uh, I think, you know, and probably in a week or two, we'll be able to really pull a lot more together. But this is the yard sale that is on July 30th and 31st. And, um, yeah, we, we, I think ideally it would be great to have a park-wide sale, but we do have to be careful about the flow of traffic in on the RV side. And uh, with the plumbing, with the open plumbing repair, which is gonna get worse over the coming weeks, we were trying to, 
trying to keep corral that into a certain area of the park and and stay tuned on those parking spaces and the grassy area that are between the office and bay boulevard i think we can we can probably use that space but we just weren't sure what was happening with overflow parking and uh, potentially even um some some over some dry camping if we had to regarding the uh the move around of of the plumbing, uh, the, the spaces that are blocked out now for the plumbing. I think we've gotten a handle on that, but you know, two to three weeks ago when we were starting to talk about this, we weren't sure. So at the at the bare minimum, we, we just wanna really try to uh, control the flow of traffic on the RV side right now. Um, but uh, we'll continue to promote it, reach out as you need. And if there are other uh, members on this call that wanna help out, Hazel is the contact. And uh, that information is at the office as well. Hazel has did a very good job on this. So thanks goes out to her and her crew. Yeah. All right, so I touched on the July meeting schedule. We are going to, our, our next meeting is going to be, let me pull up my, my calendar here. Our next meeting is going to be on the 9th of July, and that's going to be a slightly different format. I'm, I'm not uh, exactly sure how that flows. It's going to be very similar to our agenda. It's just going to be tighter. And then we'll have community time at the end. And then on the 23rd will be the a full com, a full blown community meeting. So uh, that's it. The 9th and the 23rd, I'll publish that in emails and on the website. And we'll go from there. If we need to have a special session on Mondays, we absolutely can. That that kind of as needed is still in place. Uh, per our bylaws, we need to give the members a, a week's notice when we hold a special meeting on Mondays. At one point, we just had Monday meetings. We had enough going on that we had to talk about uh, quite a few things every week, twice a week. So we'll keep you posted on that. I'll, I'll continue to send it out through email. And I will have an update for everybody on the what's happening through the office as far as uh, being able to accept credit cards and um, finalizing some of these things that we were told would be in place within a couple of weeks. It's taking longer than we thought and we're working out the kinks on things like uh, now that we're a co-op, do we pass the credit card processing fees onto the those who want to pay by credit card? We still need credit card uh, credit cards accepted in the office for the people who walk in that want to pay for just one night, for example, that are camping with us. So we're working out those kinks, but uh, Commonwealth is working on it. I'm sorry that we didn't have credit card functionality set up for July's payment. So at this point, it is still personal checks and money orders through the office. Uh, the ACH uh, withdrawal to a checking account is set up um, and uh, we're going back and forth right now on a $1 fee for each ACH withdrawal, which uh, was not explained to any of us in the beginning. So it's, uh, it's a work in progress. We appreciate everyone's patience. Um, there's just a lot going on with uh, new computers in the office, the phones. We, got, we finally got control of the phone line. Um, that was uh, caught up in the cellar in Clay's old account, and we went back and forth on that. And so we've come up with a solution. The phone is going to be ringing through to a, a cell phone, um, a temporary cell phone, until we can get the lines ported into the actual phone on the desk. So we've just had to kind of go to plan B for certain things. It's all coming together. It may not be as smooth and as fast as some of you would like. But I do appreciate everyone's patience, and um, it's it is coming together. It's just not 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 quite the timeline we were expecting, um, and the same uh, the the same applies to late fees. Uh, some of you were holding out to put your uh, rent on a credit card. Um, they're going to continue to waive those fees through July. So August first is kind of when things starting to tight up tighten up. Uh, regarding fees and paying on time and hopefully we'll have uh, more of this worked out by the uh, August uh, rent. So are there any questions or comments on that?
No, because you won't let me speak. Well, that leads me into the uh, community time. So uh, yeah, Scott, if you would like to speak, go ahead. Scott, go ahead. So Mo, I I I just uh, muted him when he started yeah. talking. Oh. oh, okay. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, he's muted me quite a few times. That's why I can't speak. Well, you're live. Yeah, go good ahead. Good reason. You know, Mo's <laughs> nice. I I don't have to be nice. You you've been a well, real well, you don't have to be nice. You can consider it, <laughs> right? No, you, you've been extremely rude at this meeting, and it's been very- I have never been rude. I haven't even been able to talk. What are you talking about? You, you, you have been putting in very rude comments. You know, this oh, stuff well, is just uh, not at all appropriate for, for you to be doing this at this meeting. Not at all appropriate. And, really? and we do have we do have a format here where because we're we've blended both a community meeting with a board meeting, this is the format that we've that we have found that works. I mean, I realize that you have to wait to the end, um, but we've tried to allow for the leadership and the board to be able, you know, leadership to be able to comment those who are on serving on committees that are involved with the community time at the end. So it's yeah it's 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 community time now um you've got the time to speak um so yeah go but but we want this to be civil and we don't want this to be rude uh, everyone that's been participating from from way back in december we've we've got a routine that's going and it seems to be working we've had lots of participation on these calls we don't want anyone to be to feel like they've been left out but we have to be productive and civil so, and, and Martin, as the person who runs the Zoom meetings, will mute people as interruptions happen or there's background noise, and it just needs to be civil and productive moving forward. So I'm giving you the opportunity, Scott, to ask your questions or pose your, pose your issues, and now is the time. So please, let's use this time productively. Uh, I'm trying to, um, and I have not been rude as far as I know. Uh, what I do know is why is the board the only one who elects a person in office? Well, so the board was voted in by the membership. Um, yes, the, by me. Yeah, and so when they're, per the bylaws, um, when there's a vacancy, the board can fill that vacancy and we're still in an interim position. And I've been putting out a call for, if you're talking about the treasurer, I've been putting out a call for treasurer for several weeks now. And so we have the ability to fill that position, especially if someone steps forward. And in this case, um, our secretary has stepped forward to fill that role. Now there are other roles, there are, for anyone who wants to come in from the membership, um, there's a, a process by which you would submit your bio and, and a few sentences about why you want to fill a role, but we're working, we are following the bylaws. Um, Morella, I've already put in my application. Why is it not received? W application for what? For filling in the roles. So, so the, tre I haven't received anything regarding the treasurer role. That's been filled as of tonight, but we now have the secretary position that's open. And so what I would need is, I haven't seen an email come through. If I've missed it, I'm sorry. Um, and that, that so now the call out to the membership, which will go out to everyone so that everyone's got the opportunity is that we are looking now for someone to fill that secretary position. Okay. Um, I just feel left out after all that was promised and that's what my problem is well i'm sorry you feel that way um and i will remind you i know we had this conversation before but the yes the, the lender in in our having to hire a property management firm like commonwealth and and then hiring a property manager a property manager is really 
from the standpoint of us meeting those terms of the lender. They want to see that we can show history in, in running the park in a solid fashion for, I think Rose said, the, at least the first couple of years. And then once oh. we've proven to the lender, we can start to branch out on our own and make our own decisions. Um, and I know that no one on this board wanted to be able to run this park in that capacity. Right. So, yeah, um, I, I totally understand that. Okay, good, good. What um, I don't understand is the fact that you have so much knowledge here and nobody's using it. Well, uh, we have not turned anyone away from serving on any teams or committees. Um, and so the, every, every single team and committee is open. And, and I've said from the beginning, I don't want anyone to feel left out. Um, so there, I, I would encourage you to participate. And that goes to, to anyone who's listening in on this call. Um, you know, the, the, the focus has really been on trying to, to get the bylaws going. Uh, and that's, that committee has been in process uh, for several months now. So if you wanna participate, uh, I would say let's get together and let's figure out the best way to for you to participate. I well, think actually, actually, we can't get together because every time I come to you and talk to you face to face, it goes nowhere. Well, then let's set an appointment because other than seeing you in the office in the last uh, few weeks, we really haven't had that opportunity. So I will give you my word that we'll make that opportunity and we'll talk through it. As president, okay. you, I, okay, should be, thank you. I should be accessible and you should be able to speak with me. So let's take this offline and I can, I'm happy to walk through some of the different opportunities. I think this, this safety committee is a good start, um, but there are gonna be other committees spinning up as well. I so understand. My okay. phone is always open. Any of the members that are, or residents in this community should be able to approach me and or any of the board members. So I'll fix that with you, Scott. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, you, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you were able to, to attend and, and participate. Thank you, Morella. I don't like being mad, <laughs> but when I'm ignored, I get mad. Sure, well, I'm sorry <laughs> if you felt ignored, we'll fix that. Yeah, I think it was the administrator that did that. It kind of upset me when he muted me. Oh, I understand. I understand. Well, we have to we have to move things forward. And, and the, the chat comments, it's the same thing, whether it's it's being muted or how you pose yourself in the chat. So let's just take this offline. We'll have a we'll meet and we'll look at the opportunities that exist in the park. We have been asked several times, what can I do to help? And and in right. certain cases, we we don't know what we need until it pops up. And right now we've got two or three committees out there that are in process. So yes, I will follow up with you offline specifically, Scott. I will make this work. I'm telling you right now, Morella. I, I really want this to work so bad. You just don't know. Okay. Well, we'll put our heads together. Okay. Um, thank, thank you. you. Bye. If you had your hand up. I'm Jeff, sorry. Uh, I was just calling on Jeff. We had someone with their hand up. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you. Oh, yeah. um, I was wondering oh, if the board has um, come to a conclusion on rent for new members, people moving in after May 27th. Is there a, a rate schedule set, set for them? So the, um, the follow-up on that, thank you for reminding me. Um, so Rose popped up last week and said, oh yeah, anyone who's come into the co-op or moved here after the May 27th closing date uh, should be paying the full $115 rent increase and they are not eligible for this phased in $38, $39 over the next three years. So that kind of threw everyone into a, a tizzy while we were figuring this out and figuring out what the legality of it is. And uh, so that, that word got out. And I think there were s several people who, who um, thought that that was the, the ruling. And as it turns out, there's no ruling. It, we had to talk about it as, a, as, a, as leadership with not only Brian Dasso, but CASA as well. And uh, Brian said, it, it, well, that's an option what the members have signed as we approved the whole deal to purchase this park 
was this phased in rent increase. And as you pointed out, Jeff, that's what we've agreed to. That's, that's the, what it's, that's what uh, is stated. And so um, as far as changing that, what we can do as a, as a, a board and members uh, membership in the co-op is we can set a date and vote on it and say perhaps October 1st or whenever that date would be, um, we can opt to have anyone new moving into the park to pay that full $115 increase. So while you and I might be at 435 or 460 and we experience a $38 increase, anyone new after just theoretically October 1st could take on that burden of the full 115. So um, if it, you know, the fact that this was sent out to leadership and the word got out to a couple of the people that were selling their homes with realtors, if that affected a sale, well, I, I'm sorry about that, but it was, it was something we had to talk about. We couldn't keep it secret. Um, but as it turns out, Brian Dasso has confirmed and, and suggested that we, we, we keep it status quo as voted on. And if we wanna change it in the future, that'll be a, a, a vote uh, to change, to bring that in and have people new to the co-op, new to the property, take on that full burden. Okay, so just, just for clarity, uh, no decision has been made on that and no, no direction is, is being formulated? No, at this point, um, anyone that comes into the park uh, buying in either on the RV side or as a, a mobile home owner will uh, come in at that phased in rent increase, 435 now, uh, on the mobile home side, as an example, and that will raise $38 as of October 1st. Okay. So it's, it's, it's exactly as it was. No changes are going to be made at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're, you're welcome on that. And uh, it's something that we can look at, but um, it's what the membership voted on. I mean, that's Rose said, go back to what was voted on and, and Brian looked at it and I looked at it. I'm sure the board looked at it. You pointed it out and that's, that's what was stated. So if we change that, it makes, it makes sense that uh, if October 1st is the first rate, uh, the first rent increase, perhaps that's the date that we decide that anyone new into the park pays that full 115. Um, and that would be a that would be a vote a vote of the membership because that's the members have to vote on all rent changes, and that letter by the way confirming the October first rent increase uh, has gone out by Commonwealth and and uh, people are I'm seeing it come through the office into mailboxes, so that's that letter was sent out properly per the the required ninety day ahead and so October first is that is the date for the thirty eight dollars. Are there any questions about that? All right, uh, other questions from the, from, uh, the co-op members and attendees? There, mute. I see someone, uh, Jeff, uh, not Jeff Chu, but J E F F. I see that that you've popped up on the screen. Did you have a question or a comment? Well, I did have just a couple comments, which is kind of going back to some of the stuff that was already discussed. Um, one question I do have for the RV side in the mail situation: we are going to have an on-property manager starting on the twelfth. Why does the mail have to change? at this given time to put in mailboxes or have a decision made until we have infrastructure problems taken care of. Is she not able to or him able to take care of as it has been being done until it's changed? There, there's no official timeline on this project. Um, and you're right, the, the, uh, the plumbing issue makes things more difficult. Uh, and, and even discussing it and deciding to approve a budget, uh, that, that doesn't mean that we have to start right away. This plumbing issue really threw a wrench into things. 
I think the, the issue was the liability and removing the mail sorting and the mail storage, the, the majority of it from the office. Um, and that, that was, so they're two totally different, <laughs> they're related, but they're two different issues. Uh, I agree, I think trying to put mailboxes in while that plumbing is, is, uh, is open and people are moved around is, is not a good idea, but I, the discussion need, needs to take place and we need to decide you know, how we're gonna proceed on this one way or another. Uh, Commonwealth, as far as the property management goes, is, is uh, very uncomfortable with having the uh, office sorting mail and storing storing mail in an in a in an unsecure fashion. So, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, I, I would agree with you. The, the the having this whole construction site going is not optimal, and uh, I, I've had this on the agenda. I just kind of wanted to narrow it, nail it down, and 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 be able to decide. Uh, what we were doing. So does that answer your question? It does kind of answer my questions, but I also think that people on the RV side have to understand we are on an RV side. This was designed as a campground. So as a campground or short-term rental space, it was never meant to have the mailboxes in and having mail for 160 people was not in the design for the place. So it wasn't meant to have you have mail here for the permanent spots. Mm -hmm. So outside mail through the post offices and getting your own P.O. box is not an unheard of thing for everybody. And I don't think that's a big deal for most people in here. I don't know. I, I would just put it out there. I've got my own post office box because I didn't want to settle through the office either when I became permanent here. So I and, just. Yeah. yeah. And there are a lot of RVers that have that they're paying for uh, alternate P.O. boxes off property. So it's, yeah, it is expensive, uh, but uh, it's for some people, it's not an option. They don't want their mail. They want their mail secure. Yeah, I would just have it outside of, I do that either. Even if I had an address, I would have my own PO box. So that's just me, but mm -hmm. I don't see that as a big issue. I would want the infrastructure first for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is, uh, we, you know, that's an option. We don't have to proceed with this immediately. Okay. So we've got a certain amount of money and and we've got to prioritize it all uh it was something that commonwealth asked us to consider and it was already in the works anyway uh so but yes it's something that we do not have to do right now if we decide we're not going to do it and one other question when we do have the management company managers come in the on-site when we say employees are they employees of ours or are they employees of commonwealth they are employees of Commonwealth and they are, um, they, 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 they man, they're managed not only by Commonwealth, but they take their cues from the co-op. So it's a, it's a little tricky because Marcus, our, our Commonwealth representative is going to interface with them frequently on HR issues and payroll and that type of thing. But as far as how they work, that will, they'll be connected with the, the co-op board and take their direction from ultimately the board through member feedback. Um, so it's, it's kind of a blending, but they are employed by Commonwealth's uh, real estate company. May I, may I ask uh, why we didn't hire ourselves and have Commonwealth handle the payroll for us instead of having them in charge of the people that are directly taking in our money and doing that type of thing? Yes. <clears throat> the lender requires a property management company to come through and manage the property. Well, the vendor requires that, but we do have a management company that is managing the company, but an on-site manager is different than a management company. So that could be hired through the co-op and probably at a reduced rate than what maybe the management oh, company is charging us. Yeah, I understand. So, so that was the, they the Commonwealth Property Management took their cues from us from the co-op, um, and it was really kind of a combination of what is our budget, what 
what what what can the I don't know if, what can the market bear from a Newport standpoint? Um, does that does that what does that that position entail um, as far as housing or not? So they 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 took a lot of information from the cooperative, um, and we knew what kind of a budget we had and uh, what they they worked within that and um, what they did was they did the advertising the initial screening um, and then based on candidates that we were able to look at the initial interviews and and some people didn't even make it to the point where they even spoke to us as far as uh, as far as the the interview process so it it was not made in a vacuum that our input and based on our budget and what we were looking for was uh, they took that into consideration so it wasn't that they made those decisions and just said here you go um it was a it which was is not what i'm looking at it's not what i'm saying what i'm looking is for a financial end of it right because when you hire oh, someone okay. that is a property manager on site their housing is included within their payroll that they get and is part of their benefits. And I'm not sure with Commonwealth, if that's something that is taken into account because they are hiring them from a different place. So they're yeah. looking at it and then charging us for a substantial difference in maintenance fees. So that's what I'm looking at there oh, from I'm my sorry. standpoint. Yeah, if, I'm sorry. What's the difference between us hiring them ourselves and having Commonwealth do the payroll, which we can do which is get, we can't do for anything that we want to do here. Commonwealth will do that. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Because I think it would be substantially cheaper if we did hire from outside and not use them as an intermediator. And that way we don't have a conflict of interest between our on-site manager and Commonwealth and us. It takes someone out of the middle. It just mm -hmm. makes them directly responsible to our board and not to Commonwealth. I think in the beginning of this process, it, it's going to take a lot of effort, more than um, more than uh, people can would think of right now. Um, right now, Commonwealth is going to take on all this 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 burden off the board's back, and they're gonna they're gonna deal with everything. After a couple of years, you may you may be able to look back and be like, okay, now I think we can go ahead and. Um, try to hire somebody ourselves. But for now, I think that um, the process is with the lenders as well. Um, they want to see somebody that's going to be stable and uh, make sure that all the finances are in order and Commonwealth has a good uh, background in that. Eddie, I understand you're with Commonwealth and the financials would not be any different whether it is handled through a media area as it is doing now or if it is done through you because it would still be going through the office and that would still be transferred to you. Uh, I'm not with Commonwealth, I'm with CASA. Oh, with CASA, okay. The, the same difference is they're a management company. They're here to manage the property and they're to take the money in and to take care of the bills and stuff for us. We're paying them to do that as well as we're paying you to advise us on this. So just for me, I, I just figured that it, to have the control and not too many different hands and having it directly responsible to the board would be the best mm -hmm. place. And it definitely a business situation would be mm -hmm. instead of having a third party in charge of your hiring, firing and deciding what your money's doing. Yeah, that, you raise a good point. And uh, I've, I've, uh, well, I've noted that Jeff. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that, that is a valid point. Um, just so the money's right, that's all I'm looking at is that yeah. they're not, that they are taking that into account when they're hiring these people and we are paying them a fee. Right. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Chu. Thank you. Uh, regarding Commonwealth hiring, uh, property manager or the community manager and operations manager, whatever we're calling them. Uh, Commonwealth is only charging us $45 an employee per month, which is incredibly reasonable for the paperwork and all the overhead that uh, goes along with an employee. Uh, HR, we don't have to deal with HR issues. We don't have to do with, deal with uh, 
state and federal filings, there's a huge amount of overhead with having an employee. And for $45 a month, uh, we're getting off cheap as far as the uh, hiring. Uh, we, we do have to follow the Commonwealth because they're a larger company, they're required to provide a certain level of benefits and such. So we are paying benefits that we might not have chosen to, to pay otherwise. But I think uh, going with Commonwealth for hiring the employees, going through the vetting process, everything like that, uh, has been a real benefit to us. So I, personally, I think it's it was a great decision. Okay. Well, and you know, part of this is is uh, I, I understand that the lender wants us to do things a certain way, but from a day to day management standpoint. Um, I, I know that Marcus is, Marcus is our partner in that. And uh, I, I, it, in working with him, it, it, it sounds like the way he's defined it, that we have the autonomy and that, we're, we're, that it's as far as the day-to-day -day and what these people do and how they do it, that's, uh, they, they, they'll take their cues from the co-op. Um, the setup is something that is, for me, was, was daunting. So I'm glad that they're there to do that. The question is how far into this uh, can we, do we have to abide by these conditions? And at what point might we be able to break away and do some of this on our own if, if it indeed saves us money? So um, yeah, good discussion. And it's something that will mature further as we're looking at the budget and all of the, the financials. And Eddie, you're still on here? Yes, I am. Um, may I ask one other question of you? When the um, contract was closed, we have closed escrow, correct? No. So we're not closed escrow, we're still in the lending part of it and yes, we're not we under our own autonomy yet that the owner of the property is still Clay? Yes, we are. <laughs> Who, who's so, answering who's answering that i don't know okay. be Scott. so eddie go ahead so right now um <clears throat> you guys are the owners we're in a bridge uh bridge loan process so until we get to permanent financing okay so even under a bridge loan process and the money has been forwarded and we're just paying the interest on it which i do understand that but at this point, when we have the addendums that are put out and the escrow has closed, and we're in the position with this plumbing issue, that I believe that CASA advising people to close this, which is a benefit to them because they were holding out a, a great deal of money for them to close it quickly, that this probably is more of a CASA issue than it is a co-op issue and that it should be taken care of by CASA to make sure that that plumbing issue all the way up that 100 feet is taken care of financially by the other person. And any lawsuit or any problem that addresses from that is taken care of by CASA, who as our advisor and to be our advisor to get the loans and has produced a loan for us on this part along with Castle or whatever rock, Castle Rock, that this needs to be adjusted and that there should be no additional funds that are from us as a co-op directed towards that. And I see it as a CASA issue on closing this prior to that being completed. The reason we had to close the way we did as quick as we did is because of the seller. We had a purchase and sale agreement. And if we didn't complete the agreement, then your, your, your community could possibly be sold to somebody else, another redeveloper that would come through and just clear out the, the community. Now, as for financials, I, I don't, I'm not the one that deals with financials, Rose is. And um, I'm sure that if we invite her back in here to speak on this and um, she can, but I don't deal with financials. Okay, well, I'm not just talking financials. Contracts are contracts. And when you sell real estate, if you want the work done, you don't close escrow until it's done. There's not another buyer out there at this point when there's already a contract in place. So 
that shouldn't have closed and it was written in that way. The same as the $10,000 for the equipment, Eddie, should be paid by CASA because it should have been written in the contract. And any basic new real estate agent or business agent knows that. Well, CASA has been doing this and this is the 18th, 19th community that it's done. So um, if, you know, I really can't speak on this part. This is the part that I would get the developer or my director in. Okay, well, maybe you can talk to Rose about it and just put it as a side note for her and she can direct it maybe to me or to anybody else that is privy to it. But that would be my discussion that I would like to have with them is that these things usually with a contract and even a sale contract are closed or the contract's still open. This contract is closed, so there's no liability for anybody to do anything. Martin, you had your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, so so Jeff, you know, you and I have had a couple of conversations over the last couple of months. You know, you're, you're obviously an extremely intelligent, you're, you're, you're very knowledgeable about this process. But, you know, some of these questions you've asked, um, you know, I mean, these things were discussed many months ago. And, you know, I, I would really encourage you to actually sit on the board of directors. Um, you know, I mean, you, you know, you sort of pop into these meetings, you know, from time to time. But, you know, I, I think it'd be really, I think it really behooves you to actually serve as a board member so that you're staying current on this stuff though. So I, I'm just, I'm just sort of putting that out. Uh, um, so. That, that's great. I, I did run for the board. I was not elected to it. So I'm not looking at that either way or whichever well, you, way. You, you, I just, you, I don't know the back end of it and you're right. You, 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 that, you, I, you, you, you didn't even turn in a candidate statement. So, you know, if you want to run for the board you have to write a candidate statement. So, so we're going to have another board of elections coming up, and I really encourage you to run for the board. Okay, it was just questions that I had and I was wondering about, so I didn't, I felt in a community meeting that it was fine to ask that. I do apologize if that caused any uh, consternation no, on your it's, part. It's, the, it's, you know, the, these are questions that have, that have come up before, and um, that's, that's Rose's role, and she can speak to that as well, so um, you know, we're, we're, we're all working on this together. And you, as I said to you earlier, Jeff, you've got, uh, you've got a, a really strong real estate background and you have a lot of knowledge. And so your, your, uh, some of the things that you've raised are, are valid. Um, I don't know, you know, where, how that plays out where we're at right this minute, but yeah, I've taken notes on this too. So I appreciate it. And, um, you know, Eddie, I know Rose is gone, but some of this stuff we can, you know, it, it opens up questions. And if we've got answers and it's a, it's a dead issue or, or not, we can still come back to the table with those, uh, with those questions raised. So and, yeah, and you, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with Rose and I'll talk to my director as well. Yeah, and, that's um, fine. That way, if, there, if there's any questions like that, that need to be answered again, then, you know, I'll bring them to the table so they can answer them. Yeah, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. All right, so we are at uh, past eight o'clock. Um, I'd like to spin this down. I think everyone is <laughs> is feeling like uh, they're very tired, but I want to make sure that um, that we've got time for last questions. Are there other issues, questions, comments out there? Well, I just want to say I really appreciate everybody on the board and the hard work that they do and that fantastic going forward. And I feel that everybody is doing such a great job and has put so much effort in that I am very appreciative as a resident here of all the hard work of everyone and what they've done. Mm. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Martin, you had you had your hand up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, th this has been a, a somewhat contentious board meeting. Um, I, I want to sort of get so, sort of go off on a slightly, slightly different tangent. And uh, you know, all of us have heard about uh, the, the, the that condominium collapsing in Surfside, Florida. You know, there there you know there was a homeowners association, and they they apparently fought for a couple of years about what to do about uh, the repairs. And so this this has sort of dragged on for years. And you know, board members. 
you know, they'd have big fights among themselves, board members would quit and so forth and so on. And, it, you know, and it, 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 it just sort of provides a tale for us that, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, we should try to work together as much as possible. I know it's going to be pretty painful at times. And we obviously don't need to worry about, uh, you know, a 12 story building collapsing on us though, but, but we, we do have a lot of challenges facing us. And of course we have one big one right now with the, uh, with the sewer line though. So, so anyways, that's the, the importance of working together. So. Yeah, I agree, Martin. It's uh, I think we're going to have a lot of hurdles to, to face and not everyone is going to agree and it is going to be painful at times and uh you know all of us have been so focused on gaining control of the property um so now what we we have control of the property now we get into the nitty-gritty we get down into the weeds as you've said um and so it is it is not going to be easy we're not all going to agree there are going to be things that need to be voted on that that are going to be really probably very um divisive i mean we know that there are uh, we know that there are issues that we have to look at as one big park as opposed to an rv side versus a mobile home side and so you know i'm hoping people start stepping forward and seeing how they can help because it's a mindset of it's not just a few people it's got to be everyone that's willing to pitch in and and make things happen so as we settle into those roles, um, we'll see what type of uh, members want to join the board and, and step forward. But it is, it is, I think it's gonna be difficult. We do have to try to work together and be civil and it's not always gonna be easy. So I, I do, uh, and I, I echo Jeff's sentiments. The board's done a great job. We've had residents working quietly behind the scenes that aren't heard and seen every week. Um, and I don't want this to be uh, uh, just a very few people making decisions. And so on one hand, that's the beauty of a co-op because we all get a say, we all have to vote on certain things, but yeah, I think that um, just maturing this further, we're doing the best we can and we have accomplished a tremendous amount. So when we get uh, waylaid in some of the arguments and some of the little petty things, We've done a tremendous amount. We've gotten a lot achieved and there's a lot to go, but we're just in this last four weeks since we've owned the, owned the property, we have sorted through a lot of stuff. So I just would say thank you to everybody. Just even if you're attending the call and you're listening in and you're trying to get the information, thank you. Um, all we can do is just mature this further. And I think we've, uh, I think we've achieved quite a bit in, in a short period of time. So, uh, all right, uh, anything else? Anything else? Sharon? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I have a second? I, I second, second it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, so I have a, a properly uh, moved uh, motion to adjourn and a second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Say a black. Any nays? All right, everybody. The 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 uh, motion the motion to adjourn is done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, all all members and attendees. Bye, Have a everybody. Great Bye, everybody.